Oh, guys, I'm sorry. What a day. I have Miss Lauren Ryder, who is District 4 City Council, come in and I had technical difficulties after technical difficulties after technical difficulties after technical difficulties getting this show off. Um, so what's going to end up happening is it's going to kind of start in the middle of a conversation. We talked a little bit about baseball when I, the computer started glitching out. Um, and so... We missed a little bit of the beginning, but we get to the gist of what we're trying to get to talking about and stuff like that. So we're Almost in Agreement, almost agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Our website is live at almostinagreement.com. Check us out, hit us up, help us out, tell your friends about us. Um, you know, we're just trying to stay informed. That's what we're after. We want more knowledge. I'm working on some more school board stuff since that's so fun and exciting and complicated and crazy. Uh, so keep a look out for that. But without further ado, Miss Lauren Ryder. And the city of Knoxville was um, working on possibilities of improving the stadium. But it didn't matter what the city of Knoxville did to improve that stadium. The baseball team didn't want to be there. Okay. They weren't staying. Regardless, right. Right. They were leaving that community. Um, so right now we're talking about can we bring – do we want to bring baseball back to that community that didn't want baseball to leave in the first place? Right. So Probably. <laughs> it's just part of the conversation – I don't want anybody to come at me and say, Lauren Ryder's fighting for baseball. That's not all. That's not it at all. Uh, to me, this is, um, we're in the research analysis phase. We're looking at it. Uh, me, you know, obviously there's some people that know they want it. And there's some people that know they don't want it. For sure. All right. Well, then let's not talk about baseball. Let's go. Let's move off of baseball. Because again, because the big part of the baseball problem to me is that we don't have the actual proposal to pick apart yet. And I think that's the biggest That'll be the biggest next step. And the issue, so, you know, and I've got Mamatov and that team coming in to do a show with me as well. And so then I can pick a little bit more about some of the specifics that are out in the area. Sure. And I could do that on that side. And then we can ha- talk about what they're trying to do and what it means from there. So, um, I don't know. You guys had a, you guys had a meeting Tuesday. You guys do your meetings. I'm, I'm yeah. A- we had a city council meeting, our regular yeah. every other Tuesday. Cause I'm a, I'm a county. I'm, I'm not a city resident. I'm a county resident. I started the show doing all county stuff and I'm working my way into the city now. And so I've not gotten the habits of how the city works down as well as I have my county guys down. Um, just, out of habit um and so the we had a a big million dollar funding for some of the um the violence situation going on and then the the homeless encampment tent zoning thing were the two big topics um so before we go into those two what else was on that agenda that you think because that's all i heard from that from from that meeting were those two topics Um, i was gonna say let me pull my agenda it happens to be sitting right here um because i'm like i don't i don't know i don't remember (laughs) because that's Uh, one of the things that frustrates me when um i was talking to some of my county commissioners and they had had mm -hmm. it was it happened to be a monday because that's the day i like to do a lot of my interviews because i don't have the kids there at school and i'm off my day job so i have tons of time to play with um and they had a meeting that night and i pulled the agenda and was talking to them about it and yeah you know and then you go back and you watch the news that night or the next morning or something like that and the only thing on the agenda they talked about because that was the second reading of the board of health thing that was all the conversation was about the board of health thing and it's like there's 50 something items on this agenda and we talked about one and so i tried to make it a point to ask about what else is on these agendas that maybe it's not getting coverage that should sure well i will say that particular agenda by by some standards would be considered a light agenda um, because we had a lot of things on second reading. Mm -hmm. Um, So to kind of get into that for anybody who doesn't know, um, you know, we approved somebody to be on the better building board, uh, one of the citizen representatives um, that that's there. And then um, we had an appeal on the agenda, but it got postponed again for four weeks. So we have somebody who's, um, um, what they want to build or what they want to put up in this particular instance, it happens to be, um, I think the discussion is whether it's a piece of art or a sign and, um, they were denied at the board of zoning appeals because they don't meet the, the, the letter of the law of mm-hmm. our uh, building code. And so they've got to get uh, a variance to be able to do what they want. And they got denied at the board of zoning appeals. So, um, I'm trying to remember. I feel that that board of zoning appeals meeting was back in December. And so they've had a long history of getting um, uh, postponed because they're trying to work it out without having an appeal. But in that situation, we, the council member, are quasi-judicial. So we're like judges. 
um, deciding whether they get what they are asking for. Um, so that was postponed. And then we had some resolutions. I will say, you know, there's a resolution here um, for more uh, block grant money to mobile meals. Um, a lot of people have been saying, you know, obviously there's a lot of things going on because of COVID. Um, and so more monies come to us from the city, the federal government. So that was on the agenda as well. Um, about every agenda since COVID started, there's, you know, one thing here or there where it's COVID monies trying to fund things. And the, the targets have been uh, trying to keep people from falling into homelessness and to try and uh, meet food needs, utility assistance, those types of things. Right. Um, I will say I have um, had people talk to me about property tax relief and we're not allowed to adjust property tax by state law. Um, so that's one of the things people have to understand is in the hierarchy of governments, right. the city is kind of down here um, and we ha we're subject to the state laws, the federal laws, right? Cause um, that's, we can't make that, exceptions. That is something we talk about in the abstract quite often on the show is trying to figure out who the correct channel is to chase down on a particular issue. I have a, I'm, I'm in, like I said, I'm in County. Um, I bought, mm -hmm. I bought a house in County on purpose. Um, one of the things I liked about this house, which apparently nobody else thinks is cool is it has septic. And then I don't really, I just don't, I, I, I like the idea of not paying wastewater. And so now I'm going through a whole thing where my septic's having an issue and state law requires me to hook up essentially. Right. I have to hook up right now. And, but like I had to, um, I, w I can't remember who I learned it from, but I had to go through a pretty significant process to figure out uh, whose authority is forcing me to do this thing. And yeah. so, cause like I started talking to Kyle Ward, he's my County commissioner. Um, I spoke yeah. to some other people and then like I finally figured it out. And so then I started emailing Manis and uh, Massey because they are my state representatives. Um, but it took a lot of like, that's one of the things that's frustrating to me as a citizen that I'm trying to, that's one of the big information things that I want to do is try to help people figure out the play, the course of how to deal yeah. with situations because there's so many overlaying layers of stuff on whose authority sits where and stuff like that. Cause again, one of the things that I'm working on and trying to understand better is the school system, which mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes is a whole separate governing body in the County from the County commission or the city right. or the sheriff's department. They only answer to the state too. And so stuff like that is very, the, those, the, like you said, the hierarchy of government mm -hmm. um, are, are one of the things that I'm very interested in, especially trying to illuminate that to people. Um, because it, again, one of my things, if you've listened at all, is I'm a big metro. I'm on. The, I'm. I'm really stuck on this idea of, of going metro, um, and I keep forgetting that it's it's. I'm pitching it as a constituent, as a person who is under these government bodies, um, not as a political player trying to figure out the ins and outs of, well, the parties don't like each other this much and the city and the county don't get along about this. That I don't care about those things. That's not why I think about That's not the way I think about it. Um, but um, so anyway, we were going down the agenda. I went on a rant like I do. Oh, no, it's OK. Um, and I was going to say, I, yeah, I've heard you talk about Metro government uh, and I'll, I'll have to send it to you. So, again, the librarian and me actually this came from my husband. Uh, he was referencing um, a section of one of Jack Neely's books that talk about why Metro government didn't happen and who was which factions were opposed to it last time. Right. So um, I'll be happy to send that to you and you can go read uh, up on that and, and know why. I know when we moved here from Indianapolis, uh, I'm actually from Georgia. This was my attempt to get my husband halfway back home for me. <laughs> That's how I mean, um, we ended up down here similarly for my mom's sake. My mom was like, all my mom's family was in the Carolinas and this was as close as my dad was willing to get. Yeah. Where are they in the Carolinas? Um, I got Spartanburg, Anderson, um, okay. and then my, my mom's oldest sister, she passed a few years ago, but they were in Charleston and then her parents, okay. her parents, I can't remember the name of the little town, but they were way out in the country when they retired. Yeah. Um, so I'm from outside Augusta, right there on the state line of gotcha. Georgia and South Carolina. So I, I'm familiar. My sister taught in McCormick County and she's a librarian in Aiken County now. So, um, my family's all down there, but my in-laws, everybody there from Indianapolis, and uh or indiana not from indianapolis they're actually from outside fort wayne my in-laws live in richmond um and fort wayne and, is topical because uh, we were talking about baseball and that's the stadium of reference that everybody's saying we're trying to copy yeah that's I why it. i said fort wayne they're from <laughs> huntington not far from fort wayne 
I did message cousin Mary. I was going to say, if you want to talk to somebody from up there that goes to that facility, I'll hook you up with cousin Mary. I, I, I might, I might be curious to see what a, what a, what a resident thinks about the process. That'd I'm sure she fun. can round up more. I told her, I was like, Hey, maybe I need to come up there and check this out with you. But I messaged her after the baseball workshop. I said, Hey, do you ever go to that stadium? She goes, yeah, we go all the time. Sometimes we go to baseball games. Right. So they go to a lot of other events there. Um, I think the farmer's market and she went on to tell me how there were lots of people opposed to it and how great it was. So anyway, just uh, one reference. That's there may hand- be people still up there opposed to it. But that's extra. Handy. Anyway, that's yeah. my Indiana thing. So I will, what I will say is I came here by way of Indianapolis and there was Metro government there. I did not pay that much attention to local government when I lived there. Cause I was in my twenties. I think I was about 30 when I moved here. Um, I think people don't tend to pay attention to local government till it impacts them on some level. Uh, maybe for you, it's your septic tank <laughs> or other, you know. I, I, um, if, if we want to get real, real on it, it's uh, I got in a big fight with Rural Metro. That's really what okay. got me got me <laughs> angry about the way things are. Maybe not mm-hmm. angry, but a little bit uh, more um, uh, su- uh, suspiciously curious, maybe it might be the best word sure. about, about how things are set up and why they are this way. Um, yeah, I mean, unless you're fighting for a sidewalk out in front of you or you're fighting a, a particular bill or something, um, a lot of people don't pay attention to it. But when we came here, Indianapolis had metro government, and so we thought it was weird. We came here, um, and then shortly after we got here is when Black Wednesday happened. If you haven't familiarized yourself with Black Wednesday, oh, man, we made the New York Times. Come on, you got to – Knox what? County made the news. We're when was this? News. Uh, I think 2007. There's a whole book, I think, about it. You so, remember, you remember um, that part when you were talking about your 20-somethings that you don't care about things like that? Yeah. That's where I was in, in yeah. the early 2000s. Okay. <laughs> okay. But if you're going to keep doing these shows, you need to get, uh, again, I, I like the history of things, right? So um, you got to learn about Black Wednesday because it defines a lot of things about our current, uh, everything here in government. I will do. Um, I, will, I will note that for some research project for myself. Yeah, Black. Go just. It has a wiki page. Okay, we we made it. Knoxville's famous for Black Wednesday. Knox County is famous for it. All right. So um, it's a court case. All kinds of fun stuff. So I'll have you know, to, I'll get and, my lawyer buddy to sit in and translate some some parts for me because that's what he's there for. Okay. So anyway, we came here and we thought it was weird. Um, I was on the library advisory board for Knox County, and Frank. I cannot remember his last name right now. It starts with an L. He was on library board with me and he was involved in uh, local government for a long time. And he started explaining to me why Metro government hadn't passed the the last time it was on the ballot and what was told to me, whether it's correct or not. And I don't want to blame him is my understanding is that people decided, uh, obviously people were petitioning against it, but basically people in the County were like, wait a minute, we're going to have to pay twice as much tax. This is a raw deal for us. And so people ended up not voting for it and it didn't pass. Right. Cause I think that's so, one of the things where as, as I've made my pitch, I've started to kind of refine yeah. the idea. Cause I think that's one of the things that um, I kind of fail at in my presentation of it is that I don't like it's, there's not a one size fits all Metro plan. Some cities, mm-hmm. some city counties merge in this way. Some do it other ways. Some, you know, you know, like the, uh, one of the conversations I was having about it, it was last time it came up. I think it was Jesse from the compass was talking about it. It was one of the big things that was, that was being fought over last time Metro came up around here was KPD going to take over the County or was the sheriff going to be the top cop? I think is the phrasing he used. And so there's lots of, right. you know, and so again, um, uh, Eddie Manis is supposed to get me, um, the, the the charter i guess for louisville when they did it um to, again just trying to take some tr- trying to see how different places have done it in the past because i'm curious right. about it because i don't know again it to me it it, it 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 may be a logical leap of mind that's that's inaccurate um <clears throat> i know there's still real rural parts of knox county but there's not much left um and so just the 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 overlap in services and stuff like that and it just makes sense to me and I might be missing something. I'm, I'm fully open to the idea that I'm going to get, right. I'll get way steep and I'll find something and be like, Oh, this needs to stay separated. It makes sense. That it's separated. But then at the same time, we have the school boards pushed together. Uh, the prison system that we have in here is already unified. We now have a, a, a sports authority, which is a 
unified body joint right right and so we do a lot of you know so we're, we we have a lot of half steps already in place and so the question sure. is me is what's stopping us from going the rest of the way and again it's a curiosity it's not a i'm not i am not you're not out campaigning to make it happen you're yet. just trying to understand why we are where we are and that so what i have to say is when we moved here we were like what's with this place what's with these two governments right. we didn't understand at all uh i will back up and say uh, I have a, I have friends that live in the county and they're like, oh, I pay this for fire service. I pay this for trash service. I might as well pay for city taxes because it ends up being pretty close to the same thing. Right. Uh, I will say growing up, we didn't have trash service because I lived out in the country. I lived two and a half miles down a dirt road and um, we didn't have trash service. So getting rid of our trash. I've heard you talk about you have a way to get rid of yours. <laughs> um uh, I'm just going to say it was a pain in the derriere to get rid of trash. And uh, my dad had to load up the truck and take it. We didn't even have a company that would offer us trash service. Right. So people that lived out where we were, you had to like take it and make a trip to the landfill, which wasn't convenient. Like here, you've got the transfer station. We didn't even have that. Yeah, so it's... you would like accumulate your trash and then get rid of it. I also grew up on a septic tank and well water. And um, so I think all these fine amenities like uh you know water and and waste or fantastic stuff um well if you're so. if, if your dad was was uh was maybe a little more entrepreneurial he could have for a few bucks when he's making his run pick up his neighbor's trash on the way out to the dump there's, there's he could have uh, my dad was a plumber he stayed pretty busy no though. that's fair but yeah <laughs> sure you could start your your own trash company i guess i guess that's what i should have done yeah so you, you could have <laughs> stayed the there and been the trash person. queen of of uh of Indiana. Yeah. All I knew, well, this was in Georgia, but oh, all I knew was that uh, we didn't have trash service and it was kind of a pill. It was a, it was pain. But uh, anyway, and then when I, um, my, after my first year of college, I moved to Atlanta because all I want to do is get to the big city. Right. So there, and there I was, and it was great. I love cities. I love being able to walk and get places in an urban environment. Um, if I want to, for the most part, I can walk to Fountain City. I can walk downtown. I can walk so, to many of the surrounding neighborhoods. When you were in Atlanta, was that pre or post Marta? Marta was there. Marta's been there for quite a long time. I moved there in 93, fall of 93. Okay. Because so, I don't remember when. And I, I love Marta. Really? I, that's, another, that's another one of my things in the same vein of Metro. Yeah. It's like I feel like it's one of those. It probably is an eventuality if we keep growing at the rate we're growing. Um, whether we go metro Eventually. or not, there's an eventuality to where because the cat system just doesn't. For I, I don't know, I, I've only read it a couple, written it a couple times, so I can't say. But I've heard some pretty significant complaints about the uh, efficiency and time of the cat system, and to supplement well, that with with at least the bulk runs, yeah. you know, I'm not talking about like a full on New York City. You can get every block on a sure. train, but if I could get well, from West uh, Town train downtown, systems are, train systems are sexy. I mean, come on, a train, a train transit system is an awesome amenity um coming from where i did i traveled in high school um i raced bikes and so i would go uh, race in national competitions um the uh, cycling federation and olympic training center would pay for me to be like in minneapolis right so i'd be somewhere like minneapolis that had transit and um and then i'd be like wow this is amazing so you're like a teenager without a driver's license and you live down this dirt road in a rural area and you get to go to a city and you can jump on transit and get places. Like right. to me, that was exciting because I couldn't even reasonably walk out of where I live two and a half miles down a dirt road. I mean, and then once you got off the dirt road, you were at uh, like four or five lane paved road. Right. Um, so I love infrastructure, you know, <laughs> it gets you places. It gets you things. It's freedom. It's right. Freedom. I agree. And I think that, I mean, I, I was really, I, I thought it was a cool thing. The, the, uh, the student pass thing that they're putting together with the cat. I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, yeah. To, to give kids options to do, to, to get out of stuff. I'm right on the edge. So I do not quite have cat bus service. Like I'm I, like my, my property line is city on the other side okay. of my property line, but there's no bus that comes all the way down here, but I can get, I'm, I, I could walk. It'd be a, a hike, but I could walk to West Town Mall from here and catch a bus there and do whatever. Like I could get around if I wanted to. And right. I think that's the that's the thing. Like I would love. Um, by the time we'd get it, I'd probably be I'd probably have aged out of it. But I'd love to be able to go downtown, um, catch a concert or um, have dinner and 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 mm -hmm. maybe, you know some sort of show, something like that. Go to the bar, have a good time, and not have to 
pay drive fifty five dollars for a, an Uber or taxi or something like that. Yeah. Not have to drive home, um, and not have to have any like just that that take that whole part of the conversation out of going out, um, and for businesses on both ends of it, it's I think it'd be a, a positive for both ends of it. I think we could get you know a, a nice chunk of commercial around all the stations not just downtown but you know and right i I think there's a lot to it i but it's also obnoxiously expensive um it is and i will say there hasn't been a lot of emphasis on it in the federal government um uh so i mean until attitudes change uh that it's something that we want to pay for as a society it's just not going to happen right so that's where we are i mean this is one of my thoughts. I'm sure an engineer or a TDOT person would laugh at me, but any state you drive in, you're driving down the interstate. Sorry, I have a dog that's uh, decided to sit on my power cables. It's all right. My dog um, was stopping at some point too. So, um, you know, you're driving down the interstate and then there's this swath of land between the lanes, right? Why can't we have an elevated train system? So I don't have to drive to Florida 10 hours. Like I'd just love to be able to jump you're, on. You're creeping me out. I've had that, that. I've had that same exact thought. I thought I was special. So. You've, oh, you've no. ruined my special. I will say, <laughs> yeah, just as a tip to you, if you haven't taken Amtrak, the one leg we did, um, we did um, Atlanta to New Orleans, uh-huh. which is actually the cheapest route to get a sleeper car. And you have little kids, right? Mm-hmm. I'm okay. A, I'm so age. At, all right. Well, I'm just going to say my kids were littler and we took the Amtrak. You leave it like eight in the morning from Atlanta and you can pick it up in Atlanta. You don't have to, or um, Alabama. You don't have to start in Atlanta, but you just, pick up one of those areas and take the Amtrak to New Orleans. So then you don't have to figure out what to do with your car when you get to New Orleans and you do, I think my husband had a conference. That's why we went, but we paid for the sleeper car and it includes all your meals in the dining car. And my kids got, I mean, we had, we got to lounge and we, we could sleep. We had our own bathroom and it was only, I think a couple hundred bucks or something. It wasn't, it, it's not, terribly expensive and it was a great way to get there it's not fast you can drive there faster right but we got to take a nap and we watched movies and uh you get to go crazy you know across the lake and the view is like a giant picture window yeah. it's a great way to travel so we loved it yeah i've, I've been I've, it's on my list of things to do i haven't got to do it yet uh, my sister lives out in colorado and they have a lot more uh especially yeah. in the scenic side of things out that direction um and I'd love to, because I, I like my brother. My brother drove from we we grew up. I grew up in Milwaukee, and my brother drove from Milwaukee to Denver. And he said it was the yeah. worst. It was the worst three days of his life, because um, once you get past, <laughs> once you get into like Iowa, it's just a slow incline for two days. And he just said it was right. it was a brutal drive. But to do that in a train, I think it'd be fun. Um, I, I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd love to be able to go to Nashville in the same way. I'd love to be able to go to Atlanta from here in the same way. Um, yeah, you know, I think like I mean, there's there's. It, it, at least in that sense, there's plenty of track. It's just a matter of time management with a lot of it, with what we have. Cause I, yeah. I, I, I did logistics in college. That was my major before I decided apparently I want to do podcasts cause they didn't exist yet. Um, but, uh, you know, there's one of my classes I remember we were talking about it. The teacher was explaining to us how there's a lot of uh, like you, you always think of Europe and all the train stuff that's going on in Europe. It's but mm-hmm. but it, for freight conversation, you have engineers and city planners and stuff and, uh, you know, different uh, elected officials coming over to the states for freight line research. Like they're like, this is how this right. region does this kind of thing. And so on the freight side, we're way ahead. Where at least we were way ahead. I don't know if we still are. This was right. twenty years ago. But um, you know, that part of discussion, there's there's a lot here already. It's just a matter of managing it in a way. Um, that- We've just really put more emphasis on the personalized freedom of your car, and then when you get to your destination, you have the freedom of your car. But if you're traveling somewhere like New Orleans or Atlanta or Denver, you don't need your car when you get there. It's so much easier to be able to commute and get around a city that has that freedom of a transit system or walking. Right. Um, so, I mean, when, when we were in New Orleans, when we wanted to go a little further out, we got on their system. And I, I don't even remember. It might have been a trolley system, much like what we have downtown or something. So. All right. You know, when you have to go to one of those cities and you have to pay 20 to 50 bucks a day to park your car, there's a lot of, uh, that, that's a reason right there not to take your car. Right. And in, I've been, and in my opinion, one of the ugliest things that a city can have is a par- another parking garage. Like I hate, like they're just <laughs> ugly. They don't, I mean, they have value obviously, but just they're, they're, right. 
They're not particularly nice to look at. Hard to make them pretty. Right. They don't serve. I mean, they serve a function, but it's like that piece of land could have such something so much more useful and more fun or more interactive or whatever on that piece of land. But instead it's just a stack. It's a, it's, it's a cake stack of concrete with a bunch of yeah. cars in it. And so that's what, yeah. yeah. Cause and again, we go, we always go, you go into the history of Knox library. Like it's always, why don't we do more events? You know, it, at least it used to be, I, I haven't heard it as much recently, but it used to be, why isn't uh, world's fair doing more events when they were doing the remodel in there, there was the whole conversation of, is there enough hotels and parking spaces to handle the events that we want to do in there? And like, again, to me, it's like, well, we could build another hotel. We could build another parking garage, or we could just put a train in that I can park anywhere in Knoxville and get down to do the same thing. And it's not another parking garage downtown. Yeah. So. I just, I think there are a lot of people in Knoxville that would want that. We would just have to have support from the federal government and the state. So even like our local transportation is heavily subsidized by the state um, through state taxes, gas tax, that type of thing. If you look at Going back to that agenda, if you look at our agenda items, there's a lot of T dot grant, T dot grant with right. like twenty percent match on the local dollar. So, um, right. Okay, so um, not maybe yeah. not maybe not this particular agenda, but of a of a recent agenda. Because here again, one of my things is I don't feel like I hear any more than the big story or the big item. Right. Um, when I try to tune into local news on it, so. I don't know. Is this your, uh, when did you get elected? We'll start there. 2017. So I am, uh, up for reelection. This is my reelection year for a second term. Are you sticking around? Um, You're going to try to stick around. I'm, That's the right word. <laughs> I think so. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I have opposition already. Uh, apparently some people don't like me. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, maybe I don't represent, maybe they like me. I don't represent what they want, but, uh, I, uh, yes, I am running again. I did send out a postcard the other day to my district to say, Hey, by the way, I've decided to run again. Um, and not, I did, I did not decide to run because I want to run. I decided to run because my constituents want me to run. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's really important. People are like, why did you run? And it's because I wanted to do this or I wanted to do that. Um, kind of going back. I uh, got involved. Uh, like I said, I wasn't involved in local government when we lived in Indianapolis. And then when we came here, my neighborhood uh, was involved with engineering and doing a door by door voting process to get traffic calming. That's one of the biggest problems in the city that people complain about is, especially in the fourth district, is cut through traffic because we have these older neighborhoods with cut through streets. And, uh, um, so there's a lot of, uh, speeding traffic cause they don't live in that neighborhood. They're just cutting through it to get somewhere else. So anyway, that's how I got involved. And then I get involved in some zoning stuff, which going back to, uh, your comment about, you don't hear about in the news, the big, I, all these, all these agenda items are our agenda packet. And that is because, um, I, I like Jesse and Scott not to knock the compass, but like one of the most recent council meetings, there was, uh, it was a couple of hours long and we had some zoning issues that were hotly contested and fought out. And then the next morning in the compass, it was like no council meeting had happened. Right. And I'm like, what? Why right. is nobody entertained by this zoning <laughs> stuff? Well, because I think I, 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 and I agree because that's one of those things that I, 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 I we'll read the actual agendas and just breeze right by. Cause it's like, well, it's that, you know, I'll, I'll see the streets or the district that it's in. And it's like, Oh, that's over there. Whatever. That's over there. That's over mm -hmm. there. You know? And, and so, and I, I am, I am as, as much a, um, a willingly ignorant on that on those things as well. Um, just because it's hard. Like, I don't know. It's hard. I, maybe it, maybe as I come to understand it, it'll get a little easier, but it's hard to link. It's that, hard to visualize. Right. And feel like that. It's hard to visualize it. Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, almost as much as it's like, well, what does that change exactly? Um, Seema was it changes talking. Changes a lot. About, right. But, change, but, but, changes a lot. but like you said, it, it's hard to visualize it, even though it's like, it's, it's a pretty concrete thing because you cram a thousand people in, in a square mile and it, it changes how many people are on the roads, changes how much, how many kids are in whatever the school districts are and all that kind of stuff. And so, like, I understand it as a big thing. It's just really, it, uh, I'm on the same page as the compass guys. I, this guy's what I'm saying is it's hard to connect the dots on that to, to yeah. the actual impact. Um, and maybe that's something I need to make a note to work a little more on. Cause again, like a 50 something item agenda, it's half of the things on the agenda are zoning and um, even more. So like, uh, like I said, our last agenda was a lot of second readings on zoning amendments that had already been made. Um, and oddly 
a rarity is the majority of them happen to be in the third district for a change. So, um, yeah, um, you know, they don't get as many zoning changes out there, but they're growing and it's starting to happen in the third district. Uh, so there was a lot going on there and a lot of zoning changes. Some of them were good. I would say all of them are good. We passed them all, but, uh, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, you'd have to go one by one to comment on them. I think right. there was some, like, I think there was something that got down zoned from industrial to office. Uh, so that's more suitable to be, uh, that's a less intense use. It's more suitable to be near people's houses. Uh, cause it's, you know, nobody wants smokestacks next to their house, if that makes sense. Yeah, and no, that's absolutely. why zoning is important. I played, I played SimCity when I was a kid. I know I, you always put the, you, you got to put some blue between the green and the yellow or, or you can never get the greenhouses filled up. I remember the game. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're doing. We're playing SimCity every other Tuesday night at city <laughs> council, but then nobody wants to talk about it because it seems all boring and nerdy, but it it's not. So, so talking about me running for council again, that's kind of my thing. Um, and then you touched on schools and figuring out the different layers of government. I think that's another thing is people will run for city council because they think it's one thing, but it's actually a lot of zoning. Right. Um, uh, it, I helped a lady. I've got a lady I've got to follow up with. I actually might, I need, I need it to stop raining for a hot minute so I can go walk her street. <laughs> yeah. Um, she wants her street repaved and it actually wasn't, it was repaved pretty recently. So I need to go look and see what the issues are. So we do a lot of customer service, troubleshooting, connecting people um, to uh, the engineering department, stormwater issues, paving, uh, traffic issues, intersection issues. Right. I liked um, uh, um, uh, Larson from the uh, commission. I think he put it best as a uh, switchboard operators. That's a lot of the job is it's, I don't know mm-hmm. that thing, but I know somebody who might, and let's get you guys together. And then, well, we could get to the bottom of what what the situation is. Just it's it's yeah it's, it's yeah. And by the time you're going in your second term, you figured out who all the players are, and you know, like, oh, we need to call so and so in this department, um, and they're the one that handles that. So um, that's a lot of what we do. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's not glamorous. <laughs> it's uh, it's helping your community. Um, sometimes we're stuck between the administration, and the constituents. Sometimes we're on board with one. Sometimes we're on board with the other. Um, but, uh, I, my, my thing is, is I ran on listening to my constituents and making a con and considering those, uh, that feedback in decisions we make, that doesn't mean I'm always going to side with uh, the community because there's always a lot of things at play. Um, it just depends. And most every single time there's more than one viewpoint in the community. Not everybody is on the same page. So, right. Because we could go way back to the beginning and talk baseball again, because that one's very clearly <laughs> there's uh, um, there's more than a dozen viewpoints, at least as far as I found so far on who's and how's yeah. and why's and where's. Um, well, I have to. And be- I'm just soaking it all in like a sponge. Yeah, and that's what I've tried to do too. And I've tried to get as much actual data out, and instead of it just being like you know the the feels, there's too much feels in it to me. Of a lot of people I've been talking to, it's just like it feels like it's the right thing to do. It's like yeah. I mean, okay, I agree that it feels like it's the right thing to do, but it, it it we could be stuck with a sixty-five million dollar tab that goes nowhere, and yeah. you know whether whether it's intentional or not, Mister Boyd is playing a game just like everybody else does, and I get it, but there's a game there's a game being played here, and it's uh, in whose best interest is this game being played, and are we okay with it that way? And so are we bal- We're balancing. Everybody, we're trying to balance, trying to balance everybody's interests at the same time, but not pretending like there is not a significant logical interest for the Boyd group and or anybody else that does this kind of thing. Like uh, the 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 best way I've I, I can't remember who I was talking to about it, but the best way is like this is normal. This is a normal thing. This is a normal private industry sports franchise whatever interacting with a, a, a local government to do this kind of thing. This is normal. But are we okay that it's normal? And do we want to do we want to perpetuate this normality? Is 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 the conversation to have? In some people's opinion, <laughs> <laughs> no. Just do it now and get it over with. Maybe it's a band aid situation. Maybe that's what it should be. Well, I have to be super rude and cut you off. I'm sorry. I really wanted it's to okay. go longer. Um, but you know, as mentioned, it's raining and my kids are standing out in it, so I got to go get them. Um, All right. Well, I wouldn't want to do that to them. That I, would be very I appreciate nice. you. We'll do this again, um, especially when we get into campaign season. We'll play campaign games. So I'll find out who's <laughs> who's trying to steal your spot 
and I'll talk to them too and see, yeah. see if they, if they can dig a hole or if they can sound better than you. I don't know. I, I just like to play. So I really appreciate you. Um, quick plugs. If you want anything to, to go out to people to get contact with you or anything like that. Uh, my email address is L Rider. R I D E R like bus rider or Amtrak rider or Marta rider, whatever <laughs> at Knoxville TN.gov. And, uh, my phone number is eight, six, five, nine, six, four, three, nine, Oh five. Uh, my voicemail stays full a lot. Uh, cause I, I don't know, iPhone's against me or something, but anyway, <laughs> that's my email. That's my phone number. I'm happy for people to reach out. I'm running again for reelection. And I the last thing I'll say is the district wide election, the primary is on my birthday, August 31st. So, so happy um, birthday present for you. Get reelected. Uh, yeah. I mean, I will, you know, I will throw those in the show notes so it's easy for people. They can link through it <laughs> straight through it and you'll have it. Um, so p- p- happy birthday early, I guess. Um, well, uh, August 31st, it'll be <laughs> we happy no matter what. I'm going to roll with it. Good whatever answer. Happens. Good answer. You're I'll only, talk to you again some other time. You only turn 30 once. So just enjoy it. Yes, I'll be 30 again. It'll yes. be fabulous. Thank the, the, you. I appreciate you. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye. Told you it was kind of a weird one, but we did it. We got some information out there. We got to meet Miss Ryder. She is gonna. She is on the end of her term and is planning to run again, so we'll have some, uh, some campaigning in process here pretty soon. We'll have her back for that, among other things. Um, I really, really, really appreciate her putting through some of the technical difficulties you were having, as well as scheduling and other assorted things. So um, we're Almost in Agreement, Almost in Agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Our website is live, almostinagreement.com. Check us out. Hit us up. Um, we're looking for more stuff. I've got uh, Dasha and Manus on Monday. I've got uh, Massey and somebody, and then the baseball crew on the following Monday. I'm sorry, whoever I'm skipping. Um uh, working with uh, get Ron McPherson back in here with some of the uh, school board stuff so we're getting the school board back going like I said um, and we're going to keep doing this thing we're going to get into more city uh, races as they start to emerge um, we'll get the compass guys back sooner than later um, that was a really good time last weekend so like I said we're almost in agreement almost in agreement.com check us out hit us up help us out tell your friends about us I'm trying to retire 